Hi guys and welcome to this, the uh, Northern Hemisphere 2019 uh, Further Maths Written Exam 2 Solutions. Alright, so let's see how we do. Uh, data analysis, the table below displays the average sleep time in hours for a sample of 19 types of mammal. Thank you very much. Oh, Which of the two variables, type of mammal or average sleep time, is a nominal variable nominal all right so nominal means that it has no order all right so type of mammal or average sleep time well average sleep time is a number so it has some sort of order so in this situation i would be saying type of mammal determine the mean and standard deviation of the variable average sleep time for this sample of mammal all right your answers in the boxes provided all right so a lot of information yo Right, so what are we going to do? Fire up my CAS calculator. I'm going to do Control and I to insert a list and spreadsheet. So I'm going to do sleep here. And then, nope, don't want a formula. Thank you very much. And then what I'm going to do is put in my values. So what have we got? 14.5. All right, there we go. So we put the values in. Always a good idea to check because it says there are 19 values. There are 19 values. I tend to always scroll back up to try and pick up any obvious problems where I've done a, a silly character or something along those lines. Yes. So let's scroll back and see what it was. It wanted us the mean and the standard deviation. All right. So what do we do? We go menu. So we're going to menu statistics, statistics calculations, or one variable statistics. Always makes me wonder why it says number of lists, but okay. Uh, X1 list, I am going to put that as sleep. There is, I've not got a frequency list. Results column, I'll leave it at D for the moment. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, there are my statistics. So our mean is nine, so what does it want? Uh, round your answers correct to one decimal place. So 9.2 for my mean and my standard deviation is 4.2. Now again, always make sure that you use this SX one there, the standard deviation there, okay? Because that's the one that we use. All right, the average sleep time for humans is eight hours. What percentage of this sample of mammals has an average sleep time that is less than the average sleep time for a human? Ooh, eesh. So what percentage of this sample of mammals have an average sleep time that is less than eight hours? All right, so average sleep time that is less than eight hours. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we are going to do 6 out of 19, and we're going to times that by 100. That's my working out, all right? So we've got 6 out of the 19 times it by 100. Let's go back to my CAS. Uh, 6 divided by 19, and times that by 100. Now, I've got here my calculator in a strange mood, so a mood or mode. I'm going to go back to here. Document settings, approximate, okay. And then current, which will give me an opportunity to do that there. As 30, what was it to one decimal place? So 31.6%. there we go, correct answer. Uh, what's my next question? The sample is increased in size by adding in the average sleep time of the little brown bat. Its average sleep time is 19.9 hours. By how many hours will the range for the average sleep time increase? By how many hours will the range for the average sleep time increase when the average sleep time for the little brown bat is added to the example? At 19.9, whew. So 19.9 is my new value. Well, my old range is gonna be taking my biggest value there of 14.5 and subtracting 2.6. So 14.5 minus 2.6. 14.5 minus 2.6, this is my old range, 14.5 minus 2.6 gives me 11.9. Now I'm gonna have my new range, which is 19.9 minus 2.6, that value is not gonna change. So 19.9 minus the 2.6 gives me 17.3. There's probably another way of doing this. And then when I do 17.3 and I subtract from that 11.9, I'm going to get 5.4 hours. There we go, 5.4 hours. Catching! Thank you very much. Probably could have just taken the two values away. I imagine if I had actually done 19.9 minus 14.5, that would have given me 5.4 as well. Let's just check 19.9 minus 14.5 gives me 5.4. Just goes to show there are other ways of doing the questions. 
Question number two, the five and number summary below uh, was determined from the sleep time in hours of a sample of 59 types of animal. Thank you, show with calculations that a box plot constructed from this five number summary will not include any outliers. All right, so uh, what do we notice? So we know that our upper fence, and it says to show calculations, is my, uh, ooh, what's the value for my upper fence? Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. My lower fence would be Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. So let's find the IQR. IQR is going to be my third quarter, 13.5 minus my first quarter of 8. 8, 9, 10, that's going to be a 5.5. So let's do this here. So Q3 is the 13.5 plus 1.5 times 5.5. So let's do that on my calculator. 13.5, he says 135. 13.5 plus 1.5 times 5.5. 5.5, which gives me 21.75. And then let's do this one here as, what would that be? Uh, my lowest value of 8 minus 1.5 times 5.5. So 8 minus 1.5 times 5.5 gives me minus 0.25. And because, there we go, show me calculation at box, what we construct from this phone number, not have uh, no outliers as af, af, as max is less than 21.75 and min is greater than minus 0.25. All right, job done. So far, so good. Construct the box plot below. Let's see if we can do this now. And of course, you've got to do this accurately, okay? So minimum of 2.5. So there's my minimum. First quartile of eight, 10.5, uh, 13.5. Five, is that? Yeah, 13.5 and 20. Now again, you will just draw one line. I am trying to make this clear on the answers. Uh, don't draw multiple lines. This is not a sketching competition. Uh, you will have a ruler on you, but there hopefully is my box plot. Yep. Uh, the lifespan in years and gestation period in days for 19 types of mammals are displayed in the table below. A least squares line that enables lifespan to be predicted from gestation period is fitted to the data. Name the explanatory variable in the equation in this least squares line. So if you remember, what do we have? We have the explanatory there and my response there. So, ah, and the trick to this, ladies and gentlemen, is the point that lifespan lifespan is being predicted from. So when they give you the predicted from, that was actually the hint there. Because when I looked at the table a moment ago, I'm going, ah, okay. So actually in this situation there, it is gestation. Period. Okay, determine the equation of the least squares line in terms of variables, lifespan, and gestation. Notice they've left the boxes blank. They didn't even want to help you here. So I'm going to put the values into my CAS. Okay, so there we go. There's my data in my CAS calculator. What am I going to do now? Determine the least squares equation menu, statistics, stats, uh, linear regression, uh, A plus BX. That's the one I always do. My X list was, if you remember, my explanatory was gestation. My Y list is life. Uh, frequency, note, category, note, uh, results, first column. Click on OK. And there we go. That's got all my information in it. Scroll all the way up to the top. All right, and so filling this in, remember we've got our predicted first, so our y value first, which is lifespan, is equal to, now looking at my CAS calculator, this is my a value 7.58. And remember the question is quite clear to say to three significant figures. And if you're not sure how to do that, please, please learn. It's used a lot. So nine uh, for the b is 0 0.101, 0 0.101 times my gestation. There we go. That is my least squares. Write the value of the correlation coefficient rounded to three decimal places. Correlation coefficient is my R value, which is 0 0.904. 
zero point nine zero four. Kaching, one nice mark from just putting it to my calculator. Oh, we're done. Question four. All right, question four. The scatter plot below plot the various lifespan in years against the variable sleep time in hours for a sample of nineteen mammal mammals. They love their mammals. On the assumption that the association between sleep time and lifespan is linear, a least squares line is fitted to this data with sleep time as the explanatory variable. Okay, cool. Uh, the equation of the least squares line is that, the coefficient determination is that, draw the graph of the least squares line on the scatter plot. You've got to do this accurately and effectively use two points. Right now, how do you use two points? You don't just guess. They've given you the biggest hint here with the equation. All right, so the first thing is, because your graph here was starting at zero, you know that this 42.1 is actually a coordinate position. That's an actual coordinate position. So 42.1 is going to be roughly speaking one two three four five so 42.1 is going to be roughly speaking there now you've got to try and be as accurate as you can i'll just put it roughly around 45. <clears throat> where's another one that we will absolutely know well they give us 18 here as the highest value in sleep time and we can put that into my equation to actually get another coordinate position so if i go back to my uh, calculator screen and i do 42.1 minus 1.9 times 18, because that's my sleep time, that's going to give me a coordinate of 7.9, so just about 8. So again, trying to make it accurate as you possibly can. You guys will have a ruler, so can do this, and there will be a roughly 7.9. And then again, you have to draw a straight line passing through those points. And they actually do check, ladies and gentlemen, that they do that, yes? So I'm quite lucky that my screen, my software can sort of do this for me, but there we go. So <clears throat> it's only worth one mark. All right, so now we're being asked to find the linear association between lifespan and time in terms of strength and direction. All right, so we know that it would be a negative. All right, he says trying to write once again in pen. So it'd be a negative moderate linear association. The two words they were looking for were negative and moderate. How do we find the moderate? Well, again, we look at our R squared value. So they gave you the coefficient of determination, which was R squared. And we know we have those tables, which hopefully in your assembly book that tells us that when we have particular values of R, we can sort of say whether it's strong, moderate, weak or no association, right? So in this situation, because we ended up with an R value of 0.645, then that gave us the moderate. Interpret the slope of the least squares line in terms of lifespan and sleep time. The slope, right, so minus 1.90. So for every one unit increase in sleep time, we decrease the lifespan by 1.90 years. All right, so again, the sleep time is hours. So we should actually say hours for every one, I wouldn't say unit there, for every one, because they gave us the units, for every one hour increase in sleep time, we decrease the lifespan by 1.90 years. The units, ladies and gentlemen, are critically important. Increase, decrease, all that for two marks. The mark scheme said on average lifespan decreases by 1.9 years for each additional hour of sleep time. Those were where the two marks were given. Interpret the coefficient of determination in terms of lifespan and sleep time. Again, we had that value of R squared given as 0 0.416. So because we've got the R squared equals 0 0.416, it tells us that 41.6% of the variation in lifespan can be explained by the variation in sleep time. Again, this is standard, guys. This is an absolutely standard one. So 41.6% of the variation in lifespan can be explained by the variation in sleep time. So that sentence really should be copied down into your summary book and just change the words. The lifespan of a mammal with a sleep time of 12 hours is 39.2 years. Show that when the least squares line is used to predict the lifespan of the mammal, the residual is 19.9 years. Okay, so the lifespan with a mammal with a sleep time of 12 hours, he's done it again, 12 hours 
is equal to 39.2 years. That's an actual value, all right? That's an actual value. So what we now need to do is put that 12 hours back into my equation here. So sleep time of 12 hours. So what I'm now going to do is uh, flip to my calculator 42.1 minus 1.9 times the sleep time of 12 hours gave me 19.3. So when I put it into my equation, 12 hours gave me 19.3. That's my predicted. Right, so therefore we now know that the residual is equal to 39.2 is the actual minus the predicted, which gives me 39.2. And I'm doing this just to check because I'd hate to make a silly mistake. There we go, 19.9 years. ka -ching. Thank you very much. All right, question number five. The random sample of 12 mammals drawn from a population of 62 types of mammals was categorized according to the two variables. Likelihood of attack, low, medium, and high. Exposure to attacks during sleep, low, medium, and high. Awesome. Use this data to complete the, to complete, to complete the two-way frequency table below. Not seen one of these questions before. Low and low. Likelihood of attack. Now, why do you think they gave us these values here? Well, it's to give you an opportunity to check to know what's going on, all right? So exposure to attack, so low, low. How many are there with low and low? So here's a low and a low, and I'll highlight these for the moment. There's a one and a one, and a one and a one, and a one and a one, and a one and a one. So there's one, two, three, four. So I'm fairly sure that value there's gonna be four. So medium to low, I'm just going to go through this one at a time. So medium, so likelihood to attack two to one is one, just one of them. And uh, high to low, so likelihood, so three and one is just one of them again, all right? So it's just one, all right? Medium to low, so were there any uh, two and ones? Sorry, exposure, was there any ones then twos? No, good, so that's how I'm checking, right? It's always a good idea to check. So let's do now high to medium or medium to high, so twos and threes, do we have any twos and threes? We have a two, three, that's one, two of them. So that's two, and then three, three should hopefully be the rest, which is four of them. And that is the correct answer. What do we do now? Whew. Uh, the following two-way table was formed from the data generated when the entire population of 62 mammals was uh, similarly categorized. How many of these 62 mammals had both a high likelihood of attack and a high exposure? So what was it? High and high, high and high. The answer should just be 15. And I am keep checking my answers. Of the mammals that had a medium likelihood of attack, so a medium likelihood of attack, what percentage, always a good idea to make sure that when they say percentage, you now have to do a percentage, also had a low exposure to attack during sleep. So, also had a low exposure. So, there are two that had both a low exposure and was medium likelihood out of a total of four. And so, as a percentage, two over four is a half, which is 50%. All right, here we go. Does the information in the table above support the contention that the likelihood of attack is associated with its exposure to attack during sleep? Justify your answer by quoting appropriate statistics or percentages. A thing to remember when doing this uh, is that you've got to work out column percentages, all right? Not row percentages, column percentages. So in this situation, if I had taken this first column here, I would have done 31 divided by 34 because the column adds up to 34. That would have given me a 91% there. Uh, uh, what then, uh, this one here would have given me 89% and then 11%, I think. All right, and so what we can see is, as the sentence is here and it's taken specifically from the exam, was the percentage of animals with low likelihood of attack decreased with increased exposure to attack during sleep. Low 91, medium and 89, and high 11. They wanted you, remember, was to actually have uh, one category of likelihood of attack when justifying your answer and quoting exemplary or appropriate percentages. 
All right, now we move on to recursion and financial modeling still in the core section. Marlon plays guitar in a band. He paid two, uh, three, two, six, four for a new guitar. The value of Marlon's guitar will be depreciated by a fixed amount for each concert that he plays. After 25 concerts, the value of the guitar will have decreased by $200. What will be the value of Marlon's guitar after 25 concerts? Okay, so uh, again, nice and easy question. What will be the value of Marlon's guitar after 25 concerts? We would do three, two, six, four. It's gone by two hundred dollars to give you three zero six four. And don't forget your dollar sign. All right, write a calculation that shows that the value of Marlin's guitar will depreciate by eight dollars per concert. Well, again, because we are doing two hundred dollars divided by twenty-five gives me eight dollars right so 200 divided by 25 gives me the eight the value of marlin's guitar after n concerts can be determined using a rule lovely complete the rule below by determining uh, by writing the appropriate numbers in the boxes provided below well we know that marlin's guitar starts at three two six four and it is going to go down by eight dollars for every performance and, and there is the performance so three two six four minus eight m the value of the guitar continues to be depreciated by $8 per concert. After how many concerts will the value of Marlon's guitar first fall below $2,500? Okay, so what I tend to do here is we know that we've got G equals 3264 minus 8M. All right, so they're giving me a value of 2000 Now, because we want it to fall below 2500 I always make this 2500 That's the value of... We want to find how many performances N we'll give that. So 3, 2, 6, 4, minus 8n. All right, so we're going to do, uh, let's do it on our calculator in the, case, uh, in the way you guys probably will do it. Uh, you put solve into your calculator. What would we do? 2500 equals 3, 2, 6, 4, minus 8x, comma x. I'm not going to use n because uh, I've got x is easy here. So what they're telling me is after 95 and a half concerts, um, so if I solve that question, 95 and a half concerts is going to make it 2,000 exactly, uh, 2,500. So in which case we would round it up to the next value, which would give me that N would be equal to 96 concerts. Tisha plays drums in the same band as Marlon. She would like to buy a new drum kit and have saved 2,000. Has saved 2,500. Tisha could invest this money in an account that pays interest compounding monthly. The balance of this investment after N months could be determined using the account relation below. Calculate the total interest that would be earned by Tisha's investment in the first five months. Okay, so total interest will be earned by Tisha in the first five months. So we know that T0 is equal to 2,500. So we've got T1 equals, and I'm going to basically say uh, 2,500. I'm going to hit enter because that's going to go into my uh, memory. And I'm now going to do, to get to my next value, 1.0036 times my previous answer. So when I do that, I get 2509, T2 is equal, and all I'm doing is just writing down what my calculator says. Uh, what is it, first five months, that's the start. One, two, three, four is gonna be 2536.19, and T5 is gonna give me 2545. 0.33. Lovely. Thank you very much. Now, that's not answered the question because it wants us to um, work out the total interest. So because we had 2,500, I'm now going to do minus, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to minus, thank you, 2,500, which is going to give me the value of $45. All right. So therefore, I'm going to do uh, T5 minus 2,000 which gives me, don't forget my dollar sign, $45.33. Alright, and again, don't forget, the question here was quite specific. It said, round your answer to the nearest cent. Tisha could invest the 2500 in a different account that pays interest at a rate of 4.08% per annum compounding monthly. She would make a payment of 150 into this account every month. Let VN be the value of Tisha's investment after n months. Write down a recurrence relation, okay? in terms of V0, Vn, and V of n plus 1, that would model the change in the value of this investment, all right? So because it wants it to be in months, we have to be very careful here. We've got 4.08% per annum. So we know what V0 is. 
It gives us that in the question. Again, it's 2,500, comma, V of n plus one is equal to. So now I'm gonna work out my R value, my interest rate, and I'm gonna do 4.08%. I'm gonna divide that by 100 to give me a decimal and divide that by 12, which is gonna give me 0 0.0034. But we have to add one onto that. If you remember, the formula is one plus uh, R on 100. Yes, so that's going to be 1.0034 times by V of N, but uh, they're also paying in $150 plus 150. So 1.0034 plus 150, job done. Now again, because it says you have to use these particular letters, don't get tricked and put T's in. Tisha would like to have a balance of 4,500, the nearest dollar after 12 months. What annual interest rate would Tisha require Round your answer to two decimal places. Okay, for this one, I think I'm just gonna fire up my financial solver and see what we come up with. Functions and programs note, where is it? Finance, finance solver, right, N. So it's 12, because it's 12 months. Oops, hello, don't know what's going on there. No, 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 no. Compound periods, we'll change that in a moment. Let's do this in sequence. I will try to find principal value 2,500, payment 100 and, no, was it 150? Yep, 150. Final value, we said the wanted 4,500. Payments per year is gonna be 12, there we go. And um, primary, there we go. So we've put in all our information that we need. And then I'm just gonna go enter to calculate principal value. That was silly because I paid in. Uh, and I'm paying in there. So let's try that one again. There we go. And so the answer is 5.87%. To be fair, I couldn't think of any other way of doing that. There may well be one, but it, to me, much easier to fire up the financial solver. And don't forget the minus sign. Weesh. A record producer gave the band 50,000 to write and record uh, an album of songs. This 50,000 was invested in an annuity that provides a monthly payment to the band. 50,000 was an annuity that provides a monthly payment. The annuity pays interest rate at 3.12% per annum, compounding monthly. After six months of writing and recording, the band has that much remaining in the annuity. What is the value in dollars of the monthly payment to the band? Okay, so let's go back to this again. So, uh, 50,000 invested in annuity provides by now. The annuity monthly after six months. So six months. He says the interest rate was 3.12. Uh, principal value, the record gave the band $50,000 to write. So they got $50,000. Um, we don't know what the payment's going to be. The future value of that was minus, because we have to change the value, minus uh, 32667.68. Payments per year, monthly, compounds per year, we're done. And if we hit payment, we get $3,000 per month. I mean, there's a few decimal points there, but effectively we could round that. So, oh, and again, we get $3,000 per month. One mark. Now, again, remember for further maths questions where it's one mark, you just have to show the answer. If it's more than one mark, you have to show some form of working out. After six months of writing and recording, the band decided it needs more time to finish the album. To extend the time the annuity will last, the band will work for three more months without withdrawing a payment. After this, the band will receive monthly payments of 3,800 for as long as possible. All right, it's random. The annuity will end with one final monthly payment that will be smaller than all the others. Calculate the total number of months this will, annuity will last. Okay, so the trick here is they've already had six months, then there's another three months where they're not going to withdraw a payment. All right, so there was a trick to this question because um, although they aren't getting any in, uh, money, uh, while they aren't drawing money in, they're actually gonna be gaining interest on this uh, amount of money. Okay, so what we need to do is see, after three months, how much money they have gained in the account. So we've got 3.12% again, oh, 3.11. Principal value was um, 32666. 7.68, wasn't it? Yep, uh, payment zero, future value we're trying to find, payments per year 12, 
Battle of fingers today, compound periods. All right, so let's see what the future value of that's going to be. Three, two, nine, three. Okay, so they are going to, um, when they start getting payments again, have three, two, nine, two, three point one five. That's how much they are going to have in the annuity. Okay, so let's copy that and put it back as my principal value. So there's my principal value. Payments. All right, so they've effectively given that. So now what are the payments? It says 3,800. Whoops, they're gonna get money, so let's make that positive. I've done it again, 3,800. Future value is gonna be zero. Uh, the rest of the information is all the same. So what we're gonna try and work out now is how many months it's available for. So 8.77 months. That's going to effectively be here. So they're going to receive a smaller payment at the end. So the number of payments after the change is going to be eight payments. So they're going to receive eight payments. This here will be the smaller number, which we then have to add on to the six and the three. All right. So we've got uh, eight payments. So we had those original six payments, three where we didn't because they want to know the total number of months annuity will last. Eight full payments, one small payment, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 18. So in which case the total would be 18. He's going to scroll it up. That's look like 18 months is how long it's going to. So that's one of those change of condition questions, which I thought was awesome.